Hello, this is Toll from Trifo Productions with another Blender Quickie for beginners. And this is the final installment of the four port tutorial on creating a, a luxury home using the free add on building tool in Blender. And for this final, final last tutorial for this, we're going to uh, create the pillars on the outside which would be these the, the uh, outer decorative I don't know what this is called part of the entry of the home which is some uh, wooden slabs at the top with uh, some pillars and the stairs we're going to texture it and then we'll be done uh, but before we do that we're going to have to do a little bit of cleanup on our building here uh, make sure that everything lines up and everything's somewhat the same kind of dimensions as it is in our reference image. Um, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to turn on my screencast keys. Uh, let's start that up. Okay, there, there they are. Now we're going to, we're not going to use the building tool at all, so we can just close out this panel all together. Close it out all the way. And we're going to move this part of the building uh, to the middle part, which is where this is. So we're going to go into top view by pressing 1 on our keyboard, or actually 7, sorry about that. And we're going to go into this pan around so we can get a better perspective for what we're looking at. And we're going to click on our x-ray view and then for, I'm using Blender, I think this is 2.83. In other versions of Blender, to do do a box select, you have to press B and then left click and drag. But for some reason, just for I don't know why it is, but I've just seen this for 2.83. I think that's what this is. Let me let me make sure. How do I check to see what version of Blender I'm using? Okay, let me just assume that's 2.83. You have to you just click and drag for some reason, and it works. And I've seen this this is the only version of Blender that that actually works in, which is kind of weird. But we're going to drag this over here. Let's drag this back a little bit. And we're going to scroll out and then pan again. And then press A to deselect everything. Then we're going to left click and drag. And pull our outer building to the outer part. Let's pan around again. Now uh, our middle building looks a little bit thinner than what's here. So we're going to make that a little bit bigger. Or wider press A again left click and drag go into the front view and the first thing we want to do before we make it wider is that we want it to we want the bottom part of this first or middle building to be actually at the same horizon so to speak as this uh, protruding part so we're going to scroll in and we're going to pan I'm going to left click and drag on the z-axis and make sure it's flush with this part of our building of the first building so we're going to pan over again scroll up and we're going to press G and X so we can grab it on the x-axis and, and just drag our mouse over left click to confirm that selection and then G, Z and pull it down Make sure it's like really, really flush with the first building. Let's pan and zoom. Scroll up on our mouse wheel to zoom in. Okay, so G again, and Z, and pull this down a little bit more. And it's pretty flush with it. And the next thing we're going to do is just make this building wider. Let's press one on our keyboard again, and then SX. To scale it on the x-axis, make it a little bit wider. Okay, that looks good. And let's left click and drag on the x-axis to bring it over a little bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's pull it back on the y-axis, or oh, actually forward a little bit. So that the corner of our second building is somewhat flush with the corner on the first building. So we have that. Uh, let me, let's go back, let's get out of x-ray mode and go into EV viewport so we can see what's going on here 
and that looks that looks pretty good I mean our building uh, it might be intersecting with our window here a little bit so let's pull this back a little bit more just so that it's just doesn't cover up the back of our windows I've got a little bit light a little bit more light in here so we can see this a little bit better so shift a on our keyboard and we're going to click on light and Sun I'm gonna pull this up and then rotate this on the y-axis so we can point there we go no that's a, that's a whole lot better so we can see that our now this is where we want our second building to be just just behind our first building so that it doesn't block the windows at all so that looks good and the next thing we're going to do is file save that's important next we want to do is we can see here that our window windows aren't are being pretty much intersected by the roof of this building we don't want that we want to bring this first floor up higher as it is in our reference image as we can see here so let's press control R so you can see the left side of our building here let's pan and scroll in to zoom in pan again okay and the good thing about the way we built these buildings is that when we go into x-ray mode or wire mode to see through it we select what's over on this side because there's nothing on the other side we can select it freely so we want to move this whole floor up higher so let's click on this building and press tab on our keyboard <coughs> excuse me and let's uh, let's go to um, edge select <coughs> excuse me again I'm going to go into x-ray mode click on that and we're going to select everything on the first floor and move it up so left click and drag let's go to one to our front view <coughs> excuse me something in my throat I think it's the weather so down shift or alt actually or shift sorry and then we're going to left click and drag again select all that and we're going to just pull this all, all of this first floor or second floor we're going to pull all this up so it's kind of as close as possible to the top of our building or the roof as it, as it is it portrayed in the reference image so left click and drag on the Z axis and pull this up not too high we want, we want the top of this window to actually be kind of flush with the top of the curve of the roof here okay let's pivot around with our middle mouse button to see how that looks it looks pretty good and let's press one to go into front view we want we want to make the bottom of our window parallel to the top of the first roof so let's um, let's go into vertex select mode press on our keyboard left click and drag with our mouse to have that whole bottom part sele uh, selected and drag it up on the z-axis okay and that looks pretty good okay and the next thing we want to do is drag up that first floor window up higher so that is somewhat flush with the um, top of this window of, of the first building which is, would be this so press one on our keyboard and we're going to A to deselect all that and then left click and drag and once again if you're working in a different different version of blender besides once again, once again I think this is two point it's either 2.83 or 2.9 to box select press B then left click and drag but for this version of blender it's just left click and drag so that's what we're going to do now we're going to pull the window up plus the top of this door frame because we want the door frame to be higher so left click and drag across and that's all selected I'm going to pull this up and just kind of eyeball it with the bottom of this window okay and that looks uh actually it's the top sorry let's drag it up a little bit more because we want the top of this window to be perpendicular or parallel to the top of this window of the first building let's drag this up some more and we're gonna have to drag down our uh, make this set of windows wider or longer higher in height so that it's 
somewhat similar to what's not referenced image and close to the window of the first building so in terms of the the uh, height from the ground up it looks pretty good so let's press A on our keyboard one to go into front view and then left click and drag again on the bottom part of our window on the top part of our frame and pull this down let pull it up a little bit more. We want it to be somewhat narrow like it is over here. And that looks good. One again on our keyboard. And the reason why I keep pressing one is because we want it we want to be able to select it from the front view and not from the side. Or uh, like an odd angle just from the front. That's the best way to select uh, parts of your mesh when you're working on the building in Blender. So press one again on our keyboard and press A to deselect everything. You want to bring the top of the door down a little bit so that we have some space to put that uh, decorative outer part of uh, the doorway there. So left click and drag over the top part of this frame. Left click and drag. Make sure that top part is selected. Once again, if you're working in a different version of Blender, it's B to box select and then left click and drag on the Z axis. Okay, and that looks that looks nice. Looks good. Okay, a little bit lower, so it's just kind of flush at the top of this window. And one again. And the next thing we want to do is make the door wider. So box select, left click and drag across that, and then S X on the to make it wider on the X axis. And that's fine. So tab out of that, and we have that part of our building done. It looks good. And the next thing we want to do is bring this part of the building next to uh, the second part. So seven on the keyboard, top view. Let's pan up so we can see where our third building is. It's got the sun in front of it. So let's, let me drag that out of the way. So let's click and drag the box select. And we're going to pull this back, pull this over. Let's pan again to centralize our building. And we want the corner of the third building to be flush with the corner of the second building. So we're going to pull this forward a little bit and pull it in. Let's press one on our keyboard to see from the front view. So we have to drag this up. As you can see, our second building is not as tall as our, or our third building is not as tall as the second one. So we want to kind of replicate that here. So SZ with our third building selected, press SZ on our keyboard, SZ, and just drag down so that it's shorter. Let's position it so it's, it fits well, flush to our second building. Seven on our keyboard, look at it from the top view, and let's kind of angle it around, pivot it around. See there's some spacers, let's pull it back on the Y axis, left click and drag on the Y axis so that the corners meet. Scroll in a little bit more, and it meets pretty well. That looks good. And then that's that part. And the windows may be a little bit further down than we would want them to be, because these are kind of flush, pretty close to the ceiling of this uh, first building, or the third building. So just like we did with the second building, press one on our keyboard, uh, go into X-ray view. Actually, not go into X-ray view. Let's click out of that. Oh. Let me see. Oh, we're, we were in EV mode. Okay. So having this building selected, press tab on our keyboard. Is the tab working? Let me see. Let's go into. Let's get of X-ray view. Sometimes it's where stuff happens in Blender, where you you're pressing the keys, but they don't seem to respond. Let's see. Okay, so it responds there. I guess if you have. And that's one thing to note, if you have different meshes selected in Blender that aren't connected together, if you go into edit mode, it's not going to respond because you've got too many separate objects selected. So make sure you're only on one object in your scene, then press tab and you get into edit mode. That was the mistake I made. So let's press one on our keyboard and let's, uh, let's see, let's see, we'll, we want to bring the, the top floors of the windows up higher. So let's go into edge select mode and go into x-ray view so we can click or select everything from the front to the back. 
And instead of going to box select because we have this corner here, we don't want to raise up the corner, we just want to raise up the windows in the front. We're going to press C. And then we're going to just kind of select the ones we want here. Let's go into vertex select group. Press A, then C, because we don't want to select the edges at the bottom, just the vertices at the top. So we're going to select these windows here. Select this part of our mesh. Scroll up on your mouse wheel to make your selection size smaller. Let's pivot around. Make sure we got we've got the ones in the front too on the side. I mean, let's pull this up until it's pretty much flush with the roof here, which it is. So that looks good. And we want to pull. Let me see. Let's pull these set of windows up too, so that they're kind of flush with these windows on the second building. When you get on our keyboard, A, C again, scroll up on your mouse wheel to increase your area of selection or influence of selection with the mouse. I'm going to highlight all these windows, just the windows, not the floors, just the windows. Left click or right click to confirm that. Left click and drag on the Z axis and make sure everything's pretty much parallel with the second building. And that looks good. So let's press A to deselect everything, press tab on our keyboard and get out of X ray mode. And yeah, so that looks good. So let's press file and save. So we have all this set up already, the buildings where they're supposed to be. And one thing that I've seen with, <coughs> excuse me, our model here is that this first building is angled out. It's not, you know, facing the same direction <coughs> as building one and building two, or building two and building three. So we're, what we're going to do before we pivot that out is that we're going to uh, uh, put these pillars in, but before we put the pillars in, let's put in the concrete slab at the bottom, which is right here. So I want to go into front facing view, and let's press our EV shading viewport so we can get a better, better view of what we're looking at. And we're going to press shift in our keyboard, mesh cube. And and this is what this is a trick I've uh, taught in another tutorial about how to resize uh, meshes in Blender, especially like um, cubes and like simple shapes. We're going to go to edit mode. Let's repan our view here. <coughs> go into edit mode by pressing tab and keep everything selected. And what we want to do is move our pivot point to the back, let me see, back right corner of the cube. So left click and drag on the Z axis until your pivot point is right at the bottom. And then left click and drag on the X axis to make sure it's in the corner. And then go to 7 in your viewport. Let's go into X-ray mode so we can see through this. We want the pivot point, which is here, to go to the corner of our cube. So drag it on the Y axis. And then tap get out of edit mode. And this is very helpful uh, when you're wanting to, you know, make a basic um, adjustments in terms of size and dimensions to a cube is really helpful. Let's go into one our keyboard into our viewport. We're going to drag our mouse up, our cube up by pressing Z, left clicking Z and dragging up on the Z axis. And we're going to pull this to the corner because we want it to be pretty flush to the corner as it is in this building, in this um, image here, in our reference image. Left click, just kind of eyeball it, eyeball your cube. Let's go into uh, the top viewport and repan. To make sure we're somewhat where we want to be in terms of, you know, we don't want the edge of our pavement to stick out from the base of our building because that's not how the reference image is. The uh, concrete uh, slab here is pretty much flush with the building. So let's pull this in. Let's go into x ray mute mode so we can see through it. Z. So this is the edge of our, the ed this is the roof here, but this is the edge of our building here. So let's pull this in so that let's zoom in. And pan, repan, zoom in again, and repan. Let me see. Grab on the GY on the y-axis, and that looks pretty good. And let's um, go back into EV viewport, get out of the X-ray mode, and press on our keyboard. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's repan down again. <coughs> what we want to do is make this uh, pretty flat because it's the concrete slab. So let's 
SZ on our uh, with our keyboard select to press SZ on our keyboard and just pull this down. This is how this is what makes it easy when we move the pivot point to the corner. Let's scroll up with our mouse, repan it, and then GZ to grab it and make it more flush to the bottom of our building here. Okay, it looks pretty good. We want to extend it this way, so S X and then drag your mouse out. And there that is. Let me let me see. Left click to confirm that selection, press seven on our keyboard. And the next thing we want to do is we want to pull it back. In order to do that effectively, let's left click and drag on our Y axis to pull this back. And now we don't need to worry about pulling it so far back that it encompasses the whole building because we from our camera angle from the video we saw in the first uh, tutorial our camera angle will be coming zooming in from the front so we don't have to really con be concerned about the back at all so we want to just pull our cube our concrete slab to the back of the uh, third building and then s y scale it on the y-axis and just pull it up to the front and let's make sure like we said before make sure that it's pretty flush with the uh, edge of our building here Looks like it's a little bit offsets from the from the uh, far right parts. Let's press G and X and pull it in, and that looks good. Okay. Let's press one on our keyboard and then press File and Save. And that's the thing with architectural buildings uh, models. There's a lot of back and forth with it in terms of looking at the right angles, the right corners, things like that. So that's important. There's a lot of back and forth with the uh, overall viewing of our building, of our model, but that's necessary to get the right uh, perspective. So we have our building set up the way we want it set up. And now the next thing to do is have our pillars. And instead of trying to recreate, you know, uh, the whole pillar thing again, we could do that, which we probably should. So let's just um, do Shift A, make another cube to make these pillars on the side of our building. This one, this one. Let me see, I have one. Let me see, is there a pillar over here? Okay, there's one. It's two, three, four, five, and six. Six pillars. So we'll, and then the two for the uh, entryway into the home. So press Shift A, and then we're gonna go Mesh and Cube. And once again, we're going to do the same thing. Let's pull this out a little bit so we can, oh, so you can see it a little bit better. And it's not underneath the building. So let's press one on our keyboard. Let's repan. <coughs> excuse me. Press tab on our keyboard. Pull up on the z-axis, the x-axis. I don't think we need to pull it on on the. Well, let's just leave it on the z-axis. Let's, let's see how that turns out. So let's leave it on the z-axis. Go into edit mode again, or out of edit mode by pressing tab. And we're going to scale this down, press S. And to kind of help with having to constantly keep, keep pressing keyboard shortcuts to go from one uh, viewport to another, we're going to split our window into four parts, and Blender has an, an option for that. And 2.7 and below, and the tool panel, there's a display port, uh, display option there. And you just press quad view, and it automatically does it for Blender 2.8. And above, they took that option out, which I don't know why they did that. But the keyboard shortcut, if I can remember correctly, hopefully I can remember this. I think it's Shift Alt Q. No? Let me see. Shift Control Q. Yeah, okay, that's not it either. Uh, give me a second here. I think as let me see if I can I can remember this. Okay, let me see. Um, Top view, front view. So in Blender two point eight and above. As I'm listening to the uh, the keyboard shortcut is Control Alt Q. Okay, it's Control Alt Q. I'll listen to to my whole tutorial. So it's Control. Alt Q, and you have all the all the uh, views here. The 
This is a free flowing view you can just pivot around and these views are just locked into the top, the front and the right which helps with you know positioning you know elements in your scene without having to con constantly just shift views. And you can pan in and out, you can scroll in and out here and pan but you can't pivot like you can in the freeform. I call this a freeform view. So what we want to do is we want to position our pillar into this first uh, far right corner which is it's in front of that already so we're going to left click and drag on the X axis or the Y axis sorry to pull it back and it's pretty much uh, positioned properly here I'm going to scale it on the Z axis by pressing SZ and dragging up I know it might be a little bit too thick let me see um, it might be more well, not too thick. Let's pull it back on the Y axis a little bit more, because we want the wooden pillars or the wooden wooden post, I guess I'm going to call it, to stick out a little bit from it. Let me see. Let's repan here, pivot, and it sticks out. It's pretty good. So that that's good enough. And then we're going to press Shift D again to duplicate that, and drag this one over. Let's scroll up and once again SZ to just pull this up and it's flush with that. That looks good. Let's pan over one more time. Shift D again. Left click to confirm that selection. Left click and drag on the X axis. Let's scroll up and repan. Scroll and repan. And SZ on the S and the Z axis to make it taller. And that looks good. So we have those pillars set. So that building's done. It looks really nice. Let's go into. Let's look at it in the EVV port. See how it looks. Yeah, it doesn't look bad. Now it's kind of. Well, actually, it looks. It's fine. I thought it was actually intersecting into the window, and, and it's not. Okay, that's good. So we're going to do the same thing. Let me see. For this corner of this building. So we're going to do Shift D again. Shift D, left click to confirm that. Left click and drag on the X axis. And from the top viewport here, oh, is it, let me save this because my blender's starting to lag a little bit, which I don't know why that is. But oh, panning. You kind of have to get used to different parts of Blender because I was just trying to drag it automatically by holding it on my middle mouse button and dragging it, but that didn't work because I had to use my pan option here to do that. Let's left click and drag on the X axis and let's pull this back. And to see it a little bit better, let's go into let's go into X-ray view and the wireframe view. Scroll up again on our mouse and want to get into that corner here. Left click and drag this eyeball it, left click and drag on the X axis and then pull back on the Y axis, left clicking and dragging. And that looks looks pretty decent. Let's get out of uh, wireframe mode and x-ray mode. Let's see how that looks. Let's scroll up. Yeah, and that looks good. So that's in there. And we're going to do the same thing for this part of our building. Now the garage part, oh, that also has pillars. Oh, So we're going to have to make four more. So let's get the top three first, and we'll do the these two later on when we get the top three done. So let's shift D by having still having that pillar selected. I think it's tall enough. Let's oh actually it's not, so let's SD on the Z axis, pull it up a little bit. Let's flush with that. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to left click and drag it onto actually shift D. Let's press shift D. And we're going to drag it on the Y axis, pull it forward, and position it right in front of that uh, third building over on the y-axis. Let's see how it looks into in the front view. Scroll up with that monster wheel to zoom in and repan. Make sure it's where we want it to be. And then we're going to press SD on our keyboard to scale it down. And we're going to reposition this a little bit better. Once again, let's go into wireframe mode. And let me see. 
x-ray mode so we can see through. Okay, this is the pullback on the y-axis. And then GZ on our GX on the x-axis. GX. Okay. And I think the pillar, the pillar should be poking through. Let me see. Let's pan down. Let's see how it looks from the front view. Yeah, it is. Okay. So we don't have to resize the heights because they're all, this is all the same height. So shift D again. Shift D. Now we could have used the array modifier to do this, but uh, this is fine too. I mean, they're not a lot of pillars, so there's no really no need to do all that. Shift D again. Left click and drag on the X axis and position that where that's supposed to be. Scroll up and see how that looks. Repanning. And that looks good. And the last two pillars for the building will be at the bottom, which would be four. So one, two, three, four. And then we're going to do Shift D again. This, this is just repetitive process. So Shift D. And I probably should have uh, just kind of sped through this, but it's it's fine. This is tutorial, so it's it's uh, it's fine. Let's look at it from the side view. Once again, uh, X-ray view, or yeah, wireframe view, X-ray view. I'm going to pull this forward because this is the front of our garage. So I'm going to pull this forward a little bit. And then SZ on the on the z-axis to make it shorter, SZ to make sure it's flush with the top of the garage there. Okay. And then we're going to go into our front view here and to pull this over so that it's right in front of that pillar. Pull it down some more so it's flush with the bottom of the garage. And it looks like it's kind of short, so SZ again. Make sure it's really at the bottom of the, of the ceiling there and pull it in a little bit more so it's kind of flush with the top of the garage and we're going to duplicate this three times so shift D left click and drag on the x-axis make sure it's in front of that pillar and then shift D again left click and drag on the x-axis in the opposite direction let's scroll in to make sure we're actually in the center and then it is let's repan we want to get this last part shift D again left click and drag on the x-axis and let's click file and save and let's go back into EV viewport get out of x-ray mode and let's see how this looks so there that's done we've got those pillars put in place and that looks good and uh, let me see and that will be the last part for in terms of putting the pillars in now what we want to do next is re-angle this building because this building is not facing the same direction as these two buildings so we're going to re-angle that garage the building that has a garage on top of it or at the bottom of it we're going to re-angle it to face outward so from the top view let's go back into x-ray mode and wireframe mode and we're going to repan because we're looking at it from the top view. Left click and drag to select all of this. Okay, so that's been selected. And we're going to pivot it so that it faces outward. Okay, and you can just eyeball this too. So we're going to press, when you're in top view, we're going to pivot it on the Z axis, but when you're in top view, you don't have to press RZ because it's going to automatically pivot it or rotate it according to the uh, user viewpoint, which is in our case the top view. So just press R and then turn it around. Hope it got the. Did it get the building? Oh, okay, we don't need that part. That's the other pillar, I guess. Let's press R again and turn it and then reposition it so that it's just at that corner. Hope we're. Hope I'm doing this right. Okay, we, we omitted this part. Let's press Ctrl Z. I kind of thought I missed something. Let's hold down shift and left click to select that uh, wooden post there, that wooden beam. Let me make sure I'm getting this whole thing properly because this is the corner of uh, the first building, which is that, that pillar. So I, get, I guess I think we've selected the whole part of the first building. So let's press R again and pivot. And then just eyeball it, so reposition this and eyeball it. Make sure it's in the corner here. 
let me make sure I'm getting because I'm I'm thinking this is oh okay this is the top pillar part of the first floor let's press control Z again and one more time to go back into the to the the initial stage of this and hold down shift again left click on that and left click on that now I'm sure we, we've got the whole top first part of the building so once again in this viewport from the top or orthographic view press R again and rotate and angle it out and left click on the X axis drag it out Y axis drag it in a little bit so that the corners meet and let's get out of x-ray view and wireframe mode to go back to Eevee because we want to make sure that the angle the corner of this building meets up with the corner of that building so on the top view left click and drag on the y-axis and on the x-axis let's pull it forward a little bit and just eyeball it let's scroll in on our freeform view and that looks good see that's been pivoted out just as it is in this building and then uh, let's press A to select everything and file and save so we've got that part done and I want to make this uh, outer decorative part and then we'll do the stairs and then I'll just kind of because this tutorial is kind of going long so I guess I'll just show you how to re how to texture everything because the texturing won't take long because we're not going to be unwrap anything we're just going to texture it the way it is uh, but let's make this uh, this part here and it just looks like it's just some beams just placed in a grid format on top of it on top of each other so let's do that let's make the pillars first let's press uh, let's take this pillar since it's the closest shift D left click this to confirm that flip selection left click and drag on the x-axis and in top view we pan let's uh... let's see where our pillars are going to go and it looks like this this staircase is somewhat angled so let's let's just uh... kind of initiate that because it's at an angle i don't know if this uh... this this top part is at an angle but i'm just going to assume that it's just a square because the the uh... concrete slab at the bottom it's kind of angled where this is uh, straight and this is diagonal so that's where we're going to have to kind of simulate but let's uh, create our pillar here, let's pull our pillar over let's make it a little bit smaller, let's press S on our keyboard and just drag in so that it's a little bit smaller and then we want it to be kind of flush with the top of our, a little bit higher than our door frame so in our front view which is this let's repan this we're going to kind of judge the height because the from what I can see the height of the doorway is right there so we're going to press SD on our keyboard and drag this down and let me see this pull over a little bit more and then press shift D duplicate that pillar and drag it over to this side and we're going to pull it in a little bit because like I said before it's angled inward so we're going to pull this in and that looks looks good okay and the next thing we're going to do is like I said before since we're zooming in this is just for staging we're not going to try to angle our pillar or our decorative outer part of our uh, door entry with the same angle as the um, as a concrete slab, we're just going to make just a basic grid-shaped uh, kind of top part to our door frame here, just to just to have it there. So we're going to press. Uh, let's just instead of trying to recreate all this stuff, uh, let's. What shall we do here? Let's let's just grab this pillar here, and then press Shift D, and then pull this over on the x-axis you see I'm gonna press alt R to clear the rotation alt R okay and that looks good I'm gonna position this on top of this to pull this down and we're going to make it a little bit thicker 
and we're gonna we're gonna just put the pivot point in the corner also. So let's tab in edit mode. Left click on drag on the Y axis, and then tab to get out of edit mode. I'm gonna drag this back. And we're gonna scale it on the X axis by pressing S X and drag it out. Just to make sure we have that the right kind of thickness. And then we're going to let's pull this back. Let's pull this back into the building a little bit. So that just kind of touches the outer part of the building. Because we don't want it we don't want it all the way in. Just so that it is just touching the outer part of the building. And then we're gonna press SX or SY on our keyboard. That's why and drag it out. Make sure it's kind of flush like that. And then we're going to just, I mean, this has like, let me see, one, two, three, four, about five or six pillars. And for this, we can use a ray modifier. So let's go to our wrench here, add modifier, and let's find a ray. And I think it's up here. There it is, Ray. And the next thing we're going to do is increase our count so we can see where the beams are. Let me see. Where's our top view? Let's go into okay, X-ray mode. And and we're going to do the offset. Let me see. Let's click. Let's type in minus one. Enter. So we want our beams to go that way. And so since we're, we want some space in between, let's left click on this a few times to give us the space we're looking for and increase the counts to four or five. Uh, five is good. And then just click apply and then they're there. And in order for us not to go through the same process again, let's pull this up on the Z axis a little bit and then press shift D to duplicate that, duplicate that and drag that down and we're going to rotate it so that it makes a grid for us let's press R and hold down control as you move your mouse so that it rotates it in increments and then when it's perpendicular I think to uh, the first set of, of uh, wooden slabs let's left click that and left click and drag on the Y axis and we have our grid okay let's scroll in and then G X so it can pull it more uh, so it can be more over the top of that first set of uh, wooden slabs there and let's, let's click and drag on the on the Z axis and then that's it and then we have that decorative part of our housing there and then that's it let's click file and save and then that's it for that part and the next last parts for modeling would be to uh, get out a diagonal here and then make our stairs and then making these um, rails is not hard either it's just they're just uh, I just used cubes because what we're going to use to make these stairs well we could use um, well let's just use that we can just use the uh, I was going to use the uh, Archimesh tools but I think um, with Archimesh they, they don't have rails in there but the um, building tool does so let's uh, let's finish our building here let's make these pillars a little bit tall so they can actually intersect with our uh, wooden slab at the top so, so select both by left clicking on the first one hold on shift left click on the next one and S Z on the Z axis and drag this up and I just noticed something here my keyboard shortcuts have disappeared and I just noticed that I think because I went into quad view so for some reason the, the keyboard shortcuts uh, they don't work or the keyboard display for the shortcuts don't work which is pretty strange so let's let file and save this so let me go back into just um, back into the single view and control alt Q okay there it is 
and there's our keyboard shortcuts there again I wonder why that just stopped working but that's just it is what it is okay let's left click um, let's repan pull it up and this is our model of our home and let's let's get rid of this these colors here first because that's kind of throwing me off a little bit let's at least select that and X out that let's go into EV to see what this looks like now and yeah that looks pretty good looks pretty nice and let's get our uh, diagonal shape there and the way we're going to do that let's click on our slab there let me see we could use our knife tool so let's go into edit mode by pressing tab and hmm I'm trying to see what else I could do here actually we don't even need the knife tool that would be a waste of time but let's select this edge let's make a a loop cut here first on this edge so press control R left click and then drag that over so that it's kind of flush with that first pillar left click to confirm that selection and then we're going to press A to just like that press in our keyboard left click on those to the vertices and we're going to drag this on the Y axis left click and drag that on the Y axis I'm going to pull this in on the X axis kind of eyeball it okay yeah I apologize for those keyboard shortcuts just disappearing uh, during the quad view I didn't expect that to happen but it did so I apologize for that but we have our our uh, diagonal uh, shaped front part of our porch here or our entry to our home let's make this let's make this a little bit more flush with the f second pillar pull that out okay, it looks better let's save that and the next thing we're going to do is let's make some stairs for this so let me see I don't want the stairs to go into this building here we might have to angle out this building a little bit more let's press 7 on our keyboard and go into wireframe view a deselect all of that uh, x-ray mode and then left click and drag over here over this building and rotate it again on it's going to automatically rotate on the z-axis and let's kind of reposition this so that it's kind of flush with the corner of our second building uh, let me see that looks pretty good let's go back into EV viewport okay we, let's pull it back a little bit more on the y-axis and let's once again just eyeball it we want these corners to kind of intersect somewhat okay so press the NI keyboard and look at it and that looks good this will give our stairs enough clearance to actually go down without having to hit this uh, first building so file and save and this building that we built in Blender is a really solid replica of uh, the architect, chief architect building that they made with their software. And it looks pretty good. I, I'm, I'm liking it myself. But let's uh, let's create these stairs and then we'll texture it, and then we'll be done. That'll be the end of the, this uh, very long tutorial. I don't even know how long we've been going, but. Uh, it's a it's a long one okay let's make our stairs let's go to our building tool now with the building tool let's select all of this and pull it back because it's going to create the stairs where our pivot point is let's just move our pivot point let's just do that let's let's click on our on the pivot icon here on our cursor icon sorry cursor and left click over there so we can build our uh, stairs on this side and the thing with the building tool is that um, it can't create the stairs by itself it, you have to do a floor plan first to so create floor plan and uh, go into edit mode and now we have that option to add stairs so let's uh, go into face select left click on that let's scroll up to zoom in and then repan scroll up let's pivot let's just try the positions so we can see where our stairs are going to end up 
And we only have to make one set of stairs and just duplicate it, and then the stairs will be done. And so let's, let's click Add Stairs. Add stairs, my friend. And there are no stairs. Maybe I have to add floors first. Oh, yeah, add floors first. Then click on the face of a of the building. Then add stairs, and then it has the stairs. There we go. And now it has the rails that we're wanting. So let's uh, let's see. Let's see. If we have different rail types to choose from. Oh, well, I just figured that out. When you scroll up and down on your mouse wheel, and and an option panel, it actually increases and decreases the size of the the. Uh, of the your of your uh, options here in terms of the uh, text size, so to speak. That's that's pretty cool. So the number of stairs that we've got here. Let me see. We have. Let me see. One, 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 two, three, four, and let's get out of edit. Oh, this has been edited most of four stairs, which is fine. That's not not a big deal. Um, let me see. Uh, for the rails. Let me see. We want to make. Let's see. Add railing. Okay. Ooh. Let me see. For our rails, add railing. We want to make the rails. Let me see. A little bit thinner. Um. Let's see. Railing offsets. That's the spacing between. Density. Is that going to increase the? Okay. Let's let's decrease the density because that makes the the rails uh, less in between and then our size okay that makes it thinner which is what we want also and then our width let's see what we do with the width the width makes the railing thin because here we have thin rails we want the width rails for our model to be thin also and that looks good and let me see let's see about the width the size on the x-axis uh, make it a little bit wider we can change this as we want in blender so that's not going to be a big deal but I'm just trying to get it as close as possible to what we're seeing here mm, that looks good okay let's tab out of edit mode and that looks like a pretty nice set of stairs now we're going to delete all this other stuff here let's go back to edit mode let's left click on that Let's press Alt and left click. Or let's press Control L. Once you've left clicked on a, a portion of your mesh, press Control L and then select the rest. And then let's press Delete on our keyboard. Delete the faces. And with this, we just want to delete these middle rails because from what I've seen from here, this doesn't have any middle rails, just the outer rails. So let's click that. Control L, Delete faces. Left click that. Um, control L, delete faces. Left click, hold down shift to make it a little bit faster. Left click, left click, left click. Control L, delete those faces. And then we have our really our stairway system. Tab that, and our pivot point is right there. And we want it to be more in the middle of our stairs. Let's press 7 on our keyboard. Press tab. A to select all the stairs. And we're going to drag this back here to our pivot point. Right to the corner there. And that looks good. Let's press tab again. We're going to position our, our stairs right at the front base of our, uh, of our entry to our home. Left click on the Y axis. And let's, uh, let me see, seven, top view. X-ray view, let's scroll up and we pan, scroll up. And let's look through our building here, okay? And this right here would be the edge of our um, walkway entrance. So we're gonna press R on our keyboard to rotate our stairs so that it's flush with that, uh, that pavement there, with the walkway. And let's just eyeball it, scroll up to get a better, more in close view and rotate again and we're going to just eyeball it and that looks good and now the width of our stairs is what we want to uh, simulate here 
Now sometimes with Blender, if you uh, change your the um, global transformation orientation, it works. Sometimes it doesn't because right now we could just change it to our view. But like again said before, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So the best way you can do this is just go into edit mode, press tab, go into edit uh, to um, uh, vert text select, press the anti keyboard to deselect everything. Press C for a circle select and left click and drag over this. And we're just going to pull this out and just eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything like that. Just eyeball it. And that looks pretty good. In our keyboard, press C again, left click and drag over this set of vertices. Do the same thing and just eyeball it. Okay. This is just, this is the actually the longest tutorial I've, I've ever done. A deselect and let's uh I just thought I'd mention that's just coming to me. This is the longest, but it's it's uh, a lot of good information. Just press one on our keyboard and let's see what how this looks. So we're gonna pull this up so that it's flush with our building here. You can see that's only this side has a railing system, the other side doesn't, which is fine. And we can just delete those sets of rails, which we will do. Okay. Let's press tab. And then face select, left click, shift, left click, left click, left click, control L, and delete faces. And then that's that. And then file and save. And all you have to do is just duplicate this all the way down because there are three sets of stairs, which is what we're going to do here. We're going to press Shift D, left click to confirm that selection. And we're just going to pull it forward and reposition it. And we're going to pull this down on the Z axis. And this kind of set off to the left here. Go into top view by pressing 7 and then pull this to the, the left here a little bit. That's how that looks from the side. This is kind of a it's a unique looking house. It's it's different, but it's fun to it's just fun to learn how to do this stuff because it's, it's it's cool to ha to be able to do this kind of stuff in Blender as opposed to you know uh, this is Chief Architect which I don't know how much it is but it's cool that you'll you have that option of doing this in Blender and getting kind of similar results so that's that's really nice to have that there and let's pull this down so that the stairs are kind of we don't want that space there but yeah that looks good and let's shift it again duplicate that and we're going to pull it forward and let's pan repan pull this down Uh, let me see. Let's make sure this is kind of flush with that top set of uh, stairs. Seven to look at from the top view. Let's pull this in. And yeah, that's that's there. That's that. Now you you can because these stairs are the reason why they come down so far because the number of stairs here are more than the, what we've got. But this is just to show you, you know. If, this is how you can build or make a uh, luxury home in Blender uh, without having to buy Chief Architect. I'm not trying to take away from Chief Architect at all because that is a top-notch program. But it's cool you can do the same thing in Blender. You know, so yeah. So we have that. That's how the stairs. And to cover all that, it's just floral plants there. Same thing with this. This is a, just a pavement that you can put in there easily. But we've got that. Let's just click File and Save. And the last part that we're going to do now is that we're going to just texture this. And like I said before, texturing is pretty easy, pretty f straightforward. And we're not going to we're not going to uh, UV unwrap anything. We're just going to just get some textures. And you can use any textures you want for this. You don't have to be the ones I use. Just use whatever you can get your hands on. So let's left click on this and select that pillar. And we're going to click Add New. 
and let's just name it, let's call it Pillar. P-I-L-L-A-R, Enter. That's all in caps, but you don't have to make yours in caps. File, save. And the next thing we're going to do is I'm, I usually use the shader view, the uh, shader um, viewport to do this. I never use, I never really use this part, the tabs. So let's, they're going to hover our mouse over this corner, left click and drag this down. Go up to this icon, left click on that, and go to uh, shader editor. And we're going to scroll up. And we're going to left click on that. And with this, you press Control T. That brings up the Node Wrangler. Oh, what happened to that? Okay. Control T. Did that, did that bring up? Oh, there it is. Now, if. Oh, it did, I did it twice. Control Z. I didn't see it when it first appeared. Let me box select that and drag it up. Now, if you press Control T, nothing happens. Go to Edit. And go to Preferences. And go to the uh, search bar here, left click on that, and then click in Wrangler. And when this pops up, uh, a, a check in the box, and then you're set. Then when you press Control T, this comes up. And since we're not going to be using uh, the UV elements of it, we're going to uh, change the uh, setup here. So we're going to go from uh, UV, click on Generate it, left click on that, and drag that down. Go from Point to Texture. With texture, when, it, when you put it on point, when it stays on point, when you adjust the uh, parameters here, it does it the reverse of texture, which is kind of confusing. So I'll always put it on texture. And when I say it reverses it, when it's on point, if you were to increase this, it would actually decrease the size of the texture as, as opposed to increasing it and vice versa. But with textures, when you increase the uh, scale of it, it increases it on the, uh, the texture itself, which is more straightforward for me. And then we're going to go to new. Oh, sorry about that. Let's cancel that out. Go to open. Sorry about that. And then we're going to go to where you, wherever you saved your textures. I'm going to go to my uh, folder where I've saved my textures. I'm going to change my uh, view here. And I'm going to just pick any texture here. Let me pick this brick. Let left click on that twice. And let's pan over and see what's going on. As you can see, it's all stretched out. And to fix that, Change it from flat to box. And then we have that. Now that's really not very pleasing to the eyes. And to fix that, we're going to change the scale. I'm going to make it smaller. So left click twice and press slash on keyboard and press to enter. Do the same thing on the y axis to enter. Let's leave this at 1. Let's see what that does at 1. Let's see what it does on the Z axis. Slash 2. Enter. And that looks that looks a little bit better. So you have to kind of play with the scale to see what you want it to see what you would prefer in terms of how we would want this to look. Now we don't have to do this for all the pillars. Once you've done that with one pillar, you just left click on each pillar. Left click, hold down shift, left click. Let me see, let's find all of our pillars. I think there's one here, left click, hold down shift when you do all this stuff, left click. Left, 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 and let's get these to left, left. Then the one that has the texture, click it last by still holding down shift and left clicking. And then press control L and then materials, and then it'll spread it throughout the whole thing. And then file, <coughs> excuse me, save. And let's do the same thing to our windows. But with the windows, it would be different. But let's get our wood first. Let's do our wood because we're doing separate objects first. Let's click on our wood there. Let's click on this piece of wood here. I'm gonna let drag this down. Click on that piece of wood. Click new. Use nodes. The same process. Left click on that. Make sure only this is selected. Because if you select, if both are selected, you press Control T. It'll add that the nodes to both sets. We only want it to be added to this one. So just left click on that to make sure this is selected, and press Control T. G to grab this up. Same process. Generated. Turn from UV to generate it. 
point to texture, is that texture? Okay. And then open, and I'm gonna just select something else, another piece of texture, the wood texture would be preferred. Let me just go down to where I've saved the wood. Uh, I think that's all the way at the bottom. Let me scroll all the way down. So I've got a lot of textures here. Here they are. And let's just left click. Let's just choose this distressed wood here. And let me see. Let's pan down. Did it apply that? Hmm. That's kind of strange. It didn't apply the texture to that. Huh. Let me pick another piece of material here. Something's. Uh, I just noticed something isn't exactly right with this. Usually, when you apply a texture, before you apply a texture, it turns black, but this isn't black. Let me rename this first. Call it wood. Enter. Let me click on open again. Sometimes, when you're on Blender for a long time, stuff starts getting weird on it. <laughs> I've noticed that plenty of times. Hopefully it's not one of those cases because we're, in, we're ending the tutorial here. Let's left click on that twice and it's still not doing it. Hmm. That is strange. It's still white. Um, this is really really weird let me delete let's let's delete that and do that again let's choose another another one let's choose that maybe let's click add new okay use nodes okay let me see use nodes it's supposed to turn black okay control T G generate it to the the vector points to uh, texture. Open then textures. Let's just use something weird. That one. Let's see how that does. Is it because it's an Eevee or something? What's what's going on here? Blender? Let me file, save it. If this doesn't work, I just know that the procedure or the process for adding textures is the same for all of your textures. Because sometimes what you have to do with Blender, turn it off and then turn it back on and then it'll reset itself. And then things will start to work right. Let's left click on that twice. Home build, EV, and nothing. Let's go to a different viewport uh, shading. Let's go to cycles. I don't know. I think EV is maybe out of commission. I don't know if he's used it too much or what is going on here. GPU computes, and it's still not. Huh? This is this is weird. We have everything set up right, where it's the texture is supposed to be generated through the generation node, and this texture, and we've mapped it correctly. So, don't know what is actually going on. Hmm, this is very very strange. Hmm. Oh. Like I said before, Blender does some weird stuff. I mean, I don't, <laughs> this is, I mean, you guys can see what I'm talking about here. We clicked on use nodes to set the node system and for the first set, and it was fine. We set up for the second set, nothing worked. I just clicked off of use nodes and now it's working. So just, Expect the unexpected when <laughs> you work in Blender. That's that's all I'm trying to say here. File and save, and then that's it. And it's pretty much the same process for the whole building. Um, 
for the bottom part of slab, let's just uh, let's rename this to wood. D enter, and then let's left click on that set of wood, set of wooden slab, and just click wood again, and then that's there in cycles. Uh, but yeah, that's the whole process from beginning to end. And I don't want to kind of bore you with trying to set the rest of the textures because it's, it's just the same process. Just left click on it. For the windows, what you would have to do is let me let me do the windows for you and then call it a day because this tutorial has gone quite, I think it's been going for like two hours, which is long. But let me left click on the building. And we're going to go into edit mode. Let's go back into uh, a different viewport shading. Let's go into edit mode by pressing tab. Go into face select because we're going to set up the textures here. Let's click, uh, let's click add new first and then just call this one building. Building, enter. Click on the pulse plus sign. Let's click on the plus sign. Okay, add new again and call this window. enter and file save now let's face select let's click on these uh, faces here if it will let me let's go into another viewport shading left click hold down shift left click left click left click left click and left click and click on the window and click on the sign that way the material for windows will be assigned to that and automatically whatever is an assigned as window will be assigned as building. Let's tab out of that. Let's click file and save. Let's go to cycles viewing again. Let's click on building. And I guess it's already set up the note system for us. Let's left click on that, press control T and then G. You can see how, how this turned pink. This is what it was supposed to do initially. I don't know why it didn't do it before. But let's go from generated to, or UV to generated, let, let me say. Point to texture and open. And let's just, let me just pick any kind of texture here. Um, let me choose, let's choose this dirty color. Well, actually, let's choose a better, better texture than that. This is the one I always pick because I like the way it looks. Where's the brick? Let me go back up. Come on, buddy. Oh, there it is. Okay, this is the one. Is this the one? Yeah, this is it. Oh, this is it, yeah. And then once again, the stretch, but change the, the layout to box. And let's make it a little bit smaller, because it's kind of big. And let's click on that to scale. Divide by two. Left click twice. Divide by two. Left click twice. Divide by two. Enter. And it's smaller. And then for the windows, uh, Blender has its own uh, window node system. So let's delete all that. Let's press Shift A, Shader, and Glass. And then let's press Shift A so we can get an output node, material output. Just connect these together, surface, and then there's your glass. And that's how you would do it for the second uh, building and the third building. And the stairs also. And that's pretty much it. So if you have, I'm going to file, save. If you have, you know, gone through this whole tutorial, I tip my hat off to you and I say congratulations, especially this this fourth port this fourth port is has been quite long but yeah that's how you can create a building a luxury building or home in blender using the free add-on called the building tool and once again thank you guys who have subscribed to the channel and those of you who are subscribing right now I really appreciate you guys and I'll see you guys on the next one I'm gonna go take a nap and you guys do the same all right adios